y'all, things are getting crazy in a medical school world. Like literally being a medical student right now or a soon to be medical student will look completely different than it did just a few years ago. Or for that matter, just a few months ago. The huge US medical licensing exams that basically define the entire medical school experience has completely changed. These tests aren't only stressful for medical students, but they're also costly, both in terms of money and in terms of time. Now, I personally think these changes are extremely beneficial for medical students, but I still think there are some things that students should consider to get the most out of their medical school experience. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you the big news and what exactly it means for medical students. What's up, YouTube? If you're new here, my name is JR Smith. I'm a first year medical student at the Mayo Clinic, and I make videos where I share tips, strategies, and resources for pre meds and medical students, as well as the occasional vlog. So, if any of that interests you, go ahead and tap that subscribe button. Now, as of January 26th, 2021, Step 2 CS has officially been discontinued. Now, this calls for a moment of celebration. Step 2 CS was a pass fail exam used to test medical students' clinical skills. That's where the CS comes from. And it was the second part of the Step 2 exam, the first being Step 2 CK, or the clinical knowledge component. Now there are a ton of reasons why students did not like Step 2 CS, and one of which was that, for the most part, every school already has a way to assess the clinical skills of their students. And the second reason was the absolutely egregious cost to just take this exam. Just the examination fee was $1,580 to take a test. And that was just the cost of the exam. There were only five locations that you can actually take Step 2 CS in Atlanta, Philadelphia, LA, Houston, and Chicago. So for most people, you had to add on the additional cost of time and travel and doing all of this for something that really didn't seem necessary because again, students were already being tested on these skills at their schools for free. Well, I guess we're paying tuition, but you get what I'm saying. Now this exam was usually taken after you've already done your clinical rotations, which in most schools happens at the end of your third year of medical school. And you already have a ton of travel during your third and fourth years, whether this be residency interviews, away rotations, etc. So one less travel requirement, one less costly exam is very much appreciated. Now let's put this in context to another massive change to the US medical licensing exams. Earlier last year, there was a decision made to convert step one, which is an exam taken at the end of your second year of medical school, basically testing all of the preclinical knowledge that you've learned up until this point, from what used to be a scored exam to now pass fail. Now, this was absolutely crazy because this was one of the primary, if not the primary tool that residency programs use to assess the candidacy of a resident applicant. In super competitive specialties, a lot of weight was put on this exam. And for students at less prestigious schools, this was essentially an opportunity for them to earn spots in these competitive specialties and at competitive programs. Now, the reason why step one carried so much weight was because there aren't that many things that medical students can do to differentiate themselves. It's not like pre-med where there's this laundry list of extracurriculars and each student has a significantly different experience. Most medical schools are pass-fail or at least trending in that direction. And things like shadowing or volunteering don't really play that much of a role anymore because we're all doing that. So now with no step two CS and step one being pass-fail, you may be asking, what things now can residency programs use to differentiate medical students? This is going to be things like research, specifically completed research projects and publications, grades on your clinical rotations during your third year, letters of recommendation, and your score on step two CK, which is now the only scored standardized exam taken in the US during medical school. Which makes me think that this exam may be more important than it has been in the past. And this may actually affect medical school curriculums because historically they would use a huge block of time during your second year of medical school for your step one prep and a small little piece of time for step two prep. Now I'm thinking that since step one is now pass fail and step two is now the only standardized scored exam in medical school, we may need a little more prep for step two. But let me know what you guys think about these crazy USMLE changes and what impact they're going to have on medical students. Well, with that, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure you smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and tap that bell if you haven't yet. It shows a ton of support for this channel. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram because any news that I find out is usually translated there first. But of course, until the next one, keep evolving and I'll see you guys soon.